Um, I was just going to ask you how you're feeling about coming back to football and what you're expecting the kind of new normal football experience to be like. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good question. Um, we'll just have to see how we how we cope with it. Uh, I feel that we have a good group um, who hopefully can manage the fact that there's going to be no fans, um, but it is it is going to be more up to ourselves because the crowd can't really get us going. So um, it's up to, to to the old and experienced guys to, to get the young guys going. Do you feel that you're safe? Do you think that the football associations have considered your safety with the return of football? Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I think um, the way we get tested, the way we have these antibacterial everywhere and every time we, we do anything, they wipe it down for us. Uh, so, so I feel that we are as safe as we can be. Um, so, yeah, I think none of us here really worry about it. We're just trying to focus on football because we have a, a good group of people around us who, who, who take care of us and make sure that everything is, is clean and, and safe. When we weren't sure if football was going to return or if it was how it was going to return, I think there was some talk about maybe there just being the playoffs. Um, are you pleased that the, the football season is coming back as it is and maybe there is still a chance for Brentford to get automatic promotion? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's what that's probably we're going for. Um, and if that's not going to happen, then hopefully we, we have a little bit more time to to get our game going uh, and make sure that we're in a, in a very, very good place for, for the playoffs. Uh, so hopefully we can we can make the playoffs, and but, but we're trying to, to go for, for, for top two, definitely. Another team that will be hoping to do that is Fulham, who you play uh, first. And I'm just wondering how big a test do you think that will be? Obviously, a local rival, another West London club who are still hoping for automatic promotion. Um, what are you expecting that actual match to be like? Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a very very tough game. Um, obviously, I think it's going to be very very mental. Uh, who can get the game going? We we both we both want the ball as much as possible. So that's that's definitely going to be a, a tough one away from home. Um, but again, I think motivation and who who can cope with the fact that there are no fans uh, the best. So um, yeah, we'll just have to see. It's 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 hard to to predict anything. Finally, from me, I know that this game is at Craven Cottage, but you're going to be playing, sadly, without fans for the rest of the season at Griffin Park. And I know that a lot of supporters were hoping to say goodbye to that to that ground. Um, is it is it as much a shame for you as it is for the fans that you're not going to be able to kind of see out the season at Griffin Park with the supporters there? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, that would have been the best way for us to say goodbye to Griffin Park. Uh, but I know it's very emotional for, for the staff around here who's been here for, for a lot of years and for the fans. Um, hopefully, let me say, I haven't I haven't given up completely on, on the fact that we might have a few fans. Uh, I know they've started doing that in Denmark. So so hopefully we're only a, a few weeks behind. So so maybe we can we can we can have some fans at the end of the season. So it's it's up to us to 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 extend the season for as long as, as, as we can. And um, yeah, hopefully they're going to be, be fans in the end. Henrik, I don't know if you can see me, but um, I can certainly hear you. Good afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Um, as Emma said, it's, it's, a, it's a very strange, it's going to be a very strange climax to the season, saying goodbye to Griffin Park um, with no fans there when ordinarily there would have been a lot of pomp and pageantry and and, and emotion about the place. Is that going to be a disadvantage to, to Brentford? Because Griffin Park is one of those compact, what we call old school football grounds, isn't it? Which generates its own atmosphere. Are you going to have to compensate for that, for the absence of that when you play your home games? Uh, definitely. We, we, we know how good we are when we play at home. Uh, the fans definitely get us going. Um, but again, I hope... And I expect that we have a group of very, very professional players who can turn this into to an advantage for us. Uh, that we that we hopefully don't need the the fans to 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 hit our level. Um, that's what I expect from our group. But I know it's going to be hard, and it's going to take a lot of effort for us to 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 get it going. Uh, especially when you're down, sometimes it's it's nice to hear the the crowd, and you can kind of help us get back on track. Uh, so that's. That's definitely going to help uh, or going to be a lot harder and it's going to take a lot from 
from the more experienced guys to to help the young guys. Yes, in, in a, uh, Henrik, in a parallel universe, if um, if this pandemic hadn't come along and uh, somewhat disrupted our, our season and our lives, you might have been playing around about now for Denmark at Euro 2020 in the finals. Uh, 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 as it is, instead of playing for Denmark, uh, possibly at Wembley, uh, in the later stages of the competition, you're going to be fighting for a place in the Premier League. In a strange way, you're almost going to be fighting for as big a prize, aren't you? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, again, I try not to, to think about too much about what 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 could have been. Uh, right now, we're gonna play we're gonna play Fulham on on Saturday. That's where the whole focus is. And then hopefully next summer I can play I can play the European Championship uh, at home in Copenhagen. So uh, right now, focus is on Fulham, and that's where it should be for for everyone around here. And um, we're just we're just happy to be back. We've been waiting a, a long time for this. Yeah. Um, last one for me, uh, Henrik. Um, you've, um, um, as well as um, uh, football, uh, in a previous incarnation, if I can say that, you've uh, you went to business school and uh, and, and 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 qualifications there. Um, uh, any stage of the last um, how long have we been? What lockdown? Twelve weeks. Uh, any stage of the last twelve weeks, have you ever thought to yourself that life might be a little bit simpler if you just had a nine to five job and putting to you, putting good use to your your business school qualifications, or now we're back in on the brink of, of, of finishing the season. Is it is it is it good that you're that you've stuck it out as a footballer and you're here you are playing for major prizes like a place in the Premier League? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, obviously, there are moments where you think about the life you you could have had if you weren't a footballer, and and sometimes the uh, the thing where you don't think about football 24/7. Um, I'm not gonna miss that when 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 I retire from football. But then again, I love being a footballer and and I love being able to do do this uh, and have a career about it. So um, this lockdown period has been been tough. But again, then I've had more time to 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 spend with my kids. Um, so. I try to look at the positive side and not not the negative side. We're back at football now, and uh, hopefully we can we can promote this season. Brilliant! Thank you for thank you for your time and good luck for the rest of the season, mate. Thank you. Is that it from you, Mike? Hi, okay. Henrik. It's Tony here. Oh, there, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah I, can hear I was you. just yeah, just going back to what was um, what you were saying there. How old are your children? Have you been having to do homeschooling and things like? Like that in the uh, in the lockdown? No, not yet. Uh, my son is four, and my daughter she's two, so uh, okay. not yet. So that's just a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you live in London, or are you outside of London? Are you able able to sort of run in the countryside and do your running, you know, in in nice parks and stuff like that when you've been training at home? Um, luckily, we were allowed to go back to Denmark, so I spent uh, some weeks in Denmark. Uh, okay. I had four, four, four weeks in Denmark, so that's that made it a lot of e a lot easier to to do my running and and, and my 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 gym. So, uh, so when did you come back? It's a bit harder here in in London, where yeah. yeah. So how long have uh, you been back? I came back just a week before we started training again. Oh, okay. Okay. Just looking at um, w when the game stopped, you just beaten Sheffield Wednesday five 0 I think, and um, and you just got a bit of momentum because before that you'd had a few too many draws. I think you hadn't lost many, but you'd drawn about four, yeah. hadn't you, in the last eight. Then you went, then you beat Sheffield Wednesday in a really good game. It, the, the break came just as seemed like you were starting to hit a bit of form. You, you you don't know. Um, it could have been a, a one-off. So I yeah. think it's we had we had a few players who struggled with some 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 smaller injuries. So for hopefully hopefully we can turn this into a positive thing for us. Um, get people back and fit because um, it's going to be a, a heavy run of games now. Uh, so we need everyone uh, back and fit. So hopefully, again, we're just trying to look at the positive side. Now we have everyone fit and ready. So hopefully that's going to be a, a benefit for us. 
Is is it almost like sort of starting the season again? It's like almost like a new competition. Do you look at it like that? You put what happened up until March behind you, and this is kind of like a new mini tournament. Can you look at it like that in a way? Yeah, I think I think you have to because it's been it's been so long since we actually played a game. Um, you have to get all the um, all the tactical bits. You need to get them back in back into shape. So. Um, it is going to be a little bit weird. We're going to see see who who done the best uh, on on Saturday. But I I feel that we have we've done everything we could, and we have again trying to to take this, to, yeah, to the next level for us. And fitness level take it a little bit higher than and a little bit harder than than we were before. So we maybe have a few exhausted players who played a lot of games. So they should be fresh now. Uh, again, hopefully, and I expect us to to just come out yeah just storming against them because after Fulham you've got West Brom haven't you and um, you know so it's a tough first couple of games and then I'm not saying no game in the championship is easy obviously but those two for those two games and I think you've got three or four games then you've got Preston it's a tough running isn't it it's also a a tough running for Fulham but it it's gonna be you're gonna have to be in top form straight away aren't you yeah, yeah, exactly, and that's why we've we've played against two two Premier League sides. Uh, so we we should be in a good place. Uh, make sure we get up to speed straight away, and uh, I think our fitness level is where it should be. Um, so we're we're ready to to take this battle, and uh, and hopefully we can. Yeah, we're chasing Fulham and we're chasing West Bromwich. So why not start with the uh, with those two games? That's great. Thanks, Henry. Thanks, Mario. Do you want to Hi, I'm Rick Malik here. Thanks very much for your time um, this afternoon. Um, to start with, could you take us back to kind of when the shutdown began and there were all sorts of rumours flying around about what might happen with the rest of the season? What were the discussions like between the players? Was there a fear that you might not get to finish what you'd started? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because we uh, we kind of put ourselves in a, in a, in a good position and... Uh, as a lockdown, they kept extending it. Uh, that was uh, that was mentally that was that was quite hard. Didn't know when we were coming back, if we were coming back. So um, yeah, mentally, I think it was it was a, one of the hardest periods uh, for for me as a footballer. Not just that uncertainty, not knowing when when to start again. Uh, I think that was that was quite hard. And obviously the big goal is is to reach the Premier League, but you've had an unexpected chance in the last few weeks to test yourselves against some Premier League opposition, albeit in you know very strange circumstances. But what can you take from from the results and the performances in those friendly games against top sides? Um, just we've got to win against uh, against Arsenal, against very very good players, and I think we were on top of the game in in, in Watford. They had some quality moments uh, and. and, and uh, one misunderstanding with the, the left back and, and the keeper. So I think we, we managed to um, at least be on the same level as as, as Watford. Um, so I think we're in a good place. I still think we can we can we can step it up just one more notch. So uh, hopefully we'll see that on, on on Saturday. And the games are going to come thick and fast now, and, and squad depth is going to be very important. I mean, when Brentford were on that great run at the start of the year and over Christmas, quite often it was easy to pick out the starting eleven from week to week. So where do you kind of think Brentford stand in terms of the squad depth going into these next few weeks? Um, from what I can see in training, I think uh, we, we have more players who, who who stepped up and who's really done done well during this during this break. So I think we have more players actually. Yeah, what can say making it harder for Thomas uh, to pick the team. So that's really good because we're going to need everyone. Um, no one can play all the games. Um, so the more, the merrier. And in particular, the two boys who came in from Oxford on on deadline day, Fosso and, and Baptiste, who have had a bit more time to bed in that they probably weren't expecting. Yeah, they they, they look really good and really sharp in training. Um, so so <clears throat> again, that's that's two people we get in who's. Who's in better shape and has had more time to like adapt to to the way we play football? Maybe that little break has given them the time to to see some of of the games we've played, um, so they know exactly what to do. Sure. Thanks very much, Emmerich. Best of luck. Thank you. Hey, Lyle. Hi, Henrik. It's uh, Lyle here. How you doing, mate? Um, Thank you. 
just want to ask you in particular about um, obviously the Brentford the forward line and how how crucial Ollie Watkins, Saeed Ben Rama, and Brian and Buemo, the, the BMW as people have been calling it, um, were um, in 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 the sort of momentum that you'd built. You know how how are they looking in training? Are, are they really uh, yeah as inspired going into this restart as they were before? Are they looking even better than they were before? Perhaps. I think we we all look look quite sharp. Um, again, it's it's for all of us to show it on on Saturday. What what we showed in training doesn't matter on, on on Saturday. But I think we're in a good place, and it's just for us to 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 find the level on on Saturday. Um, yeah, everyone everyone looks sharp. Um, so yeah, we're definitely ready ready to go chase it. Obviously, there's been some some speculation about Saeed's future um, while this lockdown has been been going on, which obviously. Um, it doesn't help matters when when those kinds of reports come up. Are, are you are you at all concerned as a teammate that Saeed might be a little bit distracted by those in, in this running? No. <laughs> Simple no. Why, why is that then? What is it about Saeed then that you think would mean? That because he, he, be... he knows if if he has to go to to any other club at some point, he needs to perform at Brentford. So why not shine now and uh, and make sure we go to, to to the Premier League and then. Maybe he doesn't. He doesn't have to change change team to to, to play in the prem. Exactly. And and what is it about Saeed then? You think that, uh, that is, is attractive and, and and why he's done so well? I mean, what have you seen from a teammate? What are you most impressed with him? Um, and, and how how far do you think he can go? Um, if he um, first of all, I think because he's such a tricky player, you don't know where you have him. You think you you got him locked in in the corner, and then all of a sudden he's out. Uh, but again, I think. It's the combinations you do with, with, with the two other guys up front and, and, and with Matthias Jensen and, and the other guys uh, up front. It's, it's, it's so hard to, to like manage him. Um, so if he, can, if he can focus completely um, and get a little bit more determination, I'm, I'm sure he can, he can take it quite far. Thanks, Henry. Hi, Henrik. Um... First off, what was it like in Denmark in terms of how strictly enforced was the lockdown in terms of obviously being able to get out and keep fit and running? Because it sounds like every country is different. And in England, we've kind of had, you know, people were allowed to exercise once a day and there was a limit. So do you mind just kind of explaining briefly what that was like while you were at home? Um, that was one of the reasons why we because Denmark was uh, a lot more open. Uh, Denmark, I think they did quite well. They they just did the lockdown like basically straight away. Um, so so it was a lot more open. We could we could move around as we wanted to. I could see my parents and and my wife's parents. So that was that was really nice. Um, and they've actually they they started to play with fans in Denmark. So right now at this stage they're playing with with 500 people and trying to to extend that. So. Basically, everything is is back open in, in in Denmark because they they did the lockdown so early that I think 550 people died in Denmark in total. So that's that that's all right when you when you look at other other countries. Sure. In, in terms of returning to training, has it been markedly different to what training was like before? We've sort of heard from a number of clubs saying it's like pre-season, etc. So do you mind just kind of giving a little bit of detail and what what it was like, what sessions were like, and how that has evolved since? Yeah, I think yeah. I think the, the training itself uh, is basically the same. Um, there was some time restrictions in in the beginning, but but now it's 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 more open. So I think it, the training is is basically the same. It's more the uh, the social part around training that that's a bit more different. And 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 say I, I miss that quite a lot. Just being able to sit sit down and have a cup of coffee after training that I really really miss that um, but the the training and the focus we've had in training is, is has been exactly the same I think and just finally you you said sort of several minutes ago that we're still trying to go for the top two and that's the sort of the the ultimate goal but considering the table and having to play Fulham first game up do you feel like it is you know win or bust essentially because the deficit to West Brom, presuming they would win their first game back, would be ultimately too great. Uh, may, maybe, in, in any, maybe in any other league than the Championship, because uh, if, if there's one thing I've learned in in my three years in the Championship is that nothing's impossible. Even if we lose the first game, um, it's definitely still possible because uh, there's so many good teams and, and West Bromwich and Fulham that they're, they're going to lose points. Uh, so, 
nothing's nothing's given beforehand so we just have to keep up and just look at every 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 game and just go for it go for the win cheers cheers thank you uh, hey hi uh yeah uh, could you tell us a bit more about your thoughts on uh, not getting to play in front of the fans especially from the uh, the two closed door uh, uh, friendlies that you played last week uh, how it will impact your performance well hopefully it won't <laughs> hopefully maybe it might even take some of the pressure off of some of the young players uh, but we'll just have to see uh, i think it's up, up to ourselves it's more up to ourselves to like find that that internal motivation for 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 what our target is um so hopefully it won't impact the game at all hopefully we can play even more free and uh and play even better perfect there we go hi henrik hope you're doing well um uh, so a few for me um uh, you mentioned denmark um have you been in contact with any any kind of former teammates kind of maybe on a national level um to see kind of what their experience of returning to football has been uh post covid um i spoke to a, a former teammate the other day but that was more that was more about um you know like before like having breakfast before training and stuff like that uh, yeah so so it wasn't as much the games um i think when i when i see the games you can you can kind of sense the mood that it, it is a bit more flat um but the game is, is basically the same so so it, it it just takes more from our, our us players um to get ourselves going um yeah again i i hope that there can be less pressure and hopefully we can we can use that in a positive way and then i think you mentioned have you have you been watching any other leagues you know obviously the bundesliga returned quite a few weeks ago have you kind of to get your football fix as it were maybe kind of watched a few games that you might not necessarily have had the time to watch kind of during during a normal season for example yeah i've, I've, I've watched a little bit of the bundesliga but otherwise the the, the danish liga obviously so um, yeah yeah you, you can you can sense that it is a bit more flat but again in denmark they started with with 500 fans now and they are actually making quite quite an impact that's you, just the fact that you can hear them hear them on tv that's that's quite that's quite nice Cool. And then final one for me, um, sort of uh, looking ahead to the weekend, uh, what kinds of challenges are you um, expecting from the Fulham side? Um, well, we played Fulham a lot of times. So we know exactly what they're good at. They're good at keeping the ball. So our pressure needs to be yeah, spot on. Um, but I'm sure that if we can get our pressure right, then you know how dangerous we are on, on, on counterattacks. So uh, if we can keep the ball more than Fulham, then I think we're in a good place.